Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad y'all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I sure hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Today, we're still in the book of Acts. We're on chapter 22. Paul speaks to the crowd. I sure hope, hallelujah, Lord, that you are saved, that you have been baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You laid down your life for Jesus as he's laid down his life for us. You received him into your life to be your Lord and Savior, meaning you were baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You read God's word daily, preferably the King James Version of the Bible. You go down on your knees in prayer and you cry out to him in sincerity and truth. Make so that way you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You need that, right? To guide us to all truth is also known as a comforter. The Lord can give us comfort that no other man can. Okay? Like man cannot. I'm telling you what you need. You need the comforter. And you need to hear it from the Lord. You need to hear his voice and know him when he's speaking to you. Understand? So you need to read his word and cry out to him till you hear from him. Don't stop crying out till you hear from him. He'll teach you the word. Only yet, he will teach you. He'll begin to teach you. And he won't stop teaching you because he that is going to good work when I stop until the day of Christ coming. Right? And you need to live a daily life of repentance. We read God's word because we learn by it. Not only that, we hear from him and we live it. It's, not, it's a holy life that you live. And you live a daily life of repentance because we live in these fleshly bodies. And the flesh is always warring with the spirit. I always tell you the truth because I love you and Father God loves you more. We're going to say a prayer for children of all ages and we're going to get right into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for giving us parents that train us up by your word, and we love them, and they love us. And thank you, Father, for giving us siblings that we love. And also, thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated. We love and respect. We love you, my Father. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen, indeed. Amen. Let us go into our reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 22, Paul speaks to the crowd. When Paul was about to be taken into the fortress, he asked the commander, Can I say something to you? How do you know Greek? The commander asked, Aren't you that Egyptian who started a riot not long ago and led 4,000 terrorists into the desert? No, Paul replied. I'm a Jew from Tarsus, an important city in Cilicia. Please let me speak to the crowd. The commander told him he could speak, so Paul stood on the steps and motioned to the people. When they were quiet, he spoke to them in Aramaic. My friends and leaders of our nation, listen as I explain what happened. When the crowd heard Paul speak to them in Aramaic, they became even quieter. Then Paul said, I am a Jew, born and raised in the city of Tarsus in Cilicia. I was a student of Gamaliel and was taught to follow every single law of our ancestors. In fact, I was just as eager to obey God as many of you are today. I made trouble for everyone who followed the Lord's way, and I even had some of them killed. I had others arrested and put in jail. I didn't care if they were men or women. The high priest and all the council members can tell you that this is true. They even gave me letters to the Jewish leaders in Damascus so that I could arrest people there and bring them to Jerusalem to be punished. One day about noon, I was getting close to Damascus when a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice asking, Sal, Sal, why are you so cruel to me? Who are you? I answered. The Lord replied, I am Jesus from Nazareth. I am the one you are so cruel to. The men who were traveling with me saw the light but did not hear the voice. I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? Then he told me, get up and go to Damascus. When you get there, you will be told what to do. The light had been so bright that I couldn't see, and the other men had to lead me by the hand to Damascus. In that city, there was a man named Ananias, who faithfully obeyed the law of Moses and was well liked by all the Jewish people living there. He came to me and said, Saul, my friend, you can now see again. At once I could see. Then Ananias told me, the God that our ancestors worshipped has chosen you to know what he wants done. 
He has chosen you to see the one who obeys God and to hear his voice. You must tell everyone what you have seen and heard. What are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and wash away your sins by praying to the Lord. After this, I returned to Jerusalem, and I went to the temple to pray. There I had a vision of the Lord who said to me, Hurry and leave Jerusalem. The people won't listen to what you have to say about me. I replied, Lord, they know that in many of our meeting places, I arrested and beat people who had faith in you. Stephen was killed because he spoke for you, and I stood there and cheered them on. I even guarded the clothes of the men who murdered him. But the Lord told me to go, and he promised to send me far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened until Paul said this. Then they started shouting, Get rid of this man! He doesn't deserve to live! They kept shouting. They waved their clothes around and threw dust into the air. Paul and the Roman army commander. The Roman commander ordered Paul to be taken into the fortress and beaten with a whip. He did this to find out why the people were screaming at Paul. While the soldiers were trying Paul to be beat up, were tying Paul to be beaten up, he asked the officer standing there, Is it legal to beat a Roman citizen before he has been tried in court? When the officer heard this, he went to the commander and said, What are you doing? This man is a Roman citizen. The commander went to Paul and asked, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, Paul answered. The commander then said, I paid a lot of money to become a Roman citizen. But Paul replied, I was born a Roman citizen. The men who were about to beat and question Paul quickly backed off. And the commander himself was frightened when he realized that he had put a Roman citizen in chains. Tomorrow, God's willing, will still come back. Still in the book of Acts, chapter 23, Paul is tried by the council. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some. He died for us all. And if you haven't given your life to Christ Jesus, what are you waiting for? Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Only Jesus died for our sins, none other. None other. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. It's something we all must do, so please do it. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, let it go. Please let it go. I'm begging thee. Let it go. If you want your Father who art in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions, please let it go. I don't care what he or she has done. It doesn't matter. When it's all said and done, the Father wants your heart to be pure, or you're not going to make it to heaven. Not only that, your, your prayers may be hindered because of your unforgiveness. Okay? I'm just telling you the truth. I always tell you the truth because I love you. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, from youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye-bye.